uh, his artwork. We uh, we switched things up and had him do all the gargantuans in the book, um, and we're having Andrea do all the warlocks. And uh, we really feel like this piece and the pieces that are forthcoming embody the power that these things are going to bring out to the table. So. Uh, World Wardens, beware. <laughs> <laughs> You'll also notice that, and I think this is directly attributed to Ed, um, the Mountain King likes to pick on Circle a lot. <laughs> so, uh, not only on the cover is he beating up a Wolverine, uh, he is also um, now beating up some more Circle constructs in this. And uh, I know that there's been some spirited debate between Brian Dugas, who sculpted the Mountain King, and Sean Bullock, who's sculpting the Wolverine as to if the artwork is telling the truth or not. So, uh, I, I will say that we've, uh, we've kind of been beating up on the troll bloods for a while, so we really wanted to give them their, uh, their revenge on, uh, on kicking a little bit of ass. <laughs> so, uh, with the Gargantuan book, this book actually returns to having a fuller breadth of models. And this means that it will also include new units, uh, new uh, solos and I think a new UA or two um, as well. So this is one of the new minion units. This is a Swamp Shambler unit. Um, basically this is the voodoo gator witch doctor is doing what they do best and uh, resurrecting a bunch of uh, deceased bog trogs and uh, bringing them into battle. Now uh, one of the important things to note is that with 20, 2012 we really wanted this to be the year of large models of Colossals and Gargantuans and we knew it was really important to bring both Colossals and Gargantuans out within the same year so that the games would have variety with each other and that no players would really feel whether whichever system they played with would feel disadvantaged um, because they had to wait for their large models, their beautiful centerpiece models that we're all really excited to get out. And that was part of the reason that we decided to keep the Colossals book to just the new Warlock or Warcasters and the Colossals themselves. Um, and Ed can talk a little bit more about some of the, the ideas that went into this, because I know you mentioned a few of the things in the panel. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, the next thing is that the Hordes came out several years after War Machine. So when we take the Gargantuan's book, what we're doing is we're giving uh, Hordes uh, a chance to sort of catch up in their uh, flexibility to where War Machine is. Um, what about Red? Oh. Red, Retribution's doing just fine, I think. They got, their, they got much more in the front end. So, this is actually our new, one of our new plastic units that's going to be coming out. These are Tharn. Um, these guys are armed with some really awesome bows. Uh, this will be another kit where uh, you will get Tharn Ravagers also in plastic. So, we're really excited for these guys to come out. I'm looking forward to them. Uh, they will be featured in the new Gargantuan's book as well. Yeah. Now, one of the really exciting things, and uh, I believe Matt has talked about this before, is that Hordes typically comes second in the release schedule, but because it comes second, it actually benefits from all the lessons and the things that we learned from War Machine development. And Hordes does, from time to time, get things first. In uh, Light Cavalry was one of the first things, and now Warlock <coughs> Units. Uh, so this is Epic Grim. And these guys are called the Hunter's Grim, and I'm going to let Ed talk a little bit about their uh, I mean, with, with, with the Hunter's Grim, we just we really wanted to, to take Grim, uh, give him a, a couple pigs that really sort of re reflect his his attitude and uh, and that sort of thing. I mean, we we had some great design feedback from development when we went into to putting these guys together, and um, some awesome concepts. I, I'm sorry, I'm racking my brain to remember actually who did the concepts. I think it was. I feel terrible now. Um, however, uh, you know, we just we really wanted to sort of embody some serious attitude with these guys for the you know one of the first uh, warlock units that's going to appear on the tabletop, and um, I'm I'm really pleased with how they turned out. I love the, the pygmy trolls there. Woo! And then here's our here, here's a, here, here's a, yet another warlock unit. Um, this is going to be Makeda three. And uh, the it's, uh, Makeda and Exalted Guardians. Yes. Um, so she's got her her pair of uh, uh, ancestral guardian uh, reminiscent uh, unit members. So I'm sure a lot of you have actually seen. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have actually seen our new Feral Warlock Midas on the banners. Um, He's, he's obviously my favorite, however, I know that, that Ed kind of prefers the Gators um, a little bit, so we have a good, we have a good split there. This, this, this guy is called Rask, 
and uh, he's going to be joining the Blind Water congregation really soon. So for all the people who have been asking me if you're getting a new, new Gator Warlock, and I've been saying no, <laughs> now you know why. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is our big exciting one. So this, you see, remember last year I, I gave away that Lewis was actually going to be going uh, going to be going epic again in the Gargantuan's book, and uh, you'll notice that we've done something special with Lilith. We've put her on a chariot slash sleigh. I don't know where we wound up with that. Um, obviously, this will not fit on a 50 millimeter base. So, we will be going to the next size of base, which you've all seen uh, several times around the table with the Colossals these days. So she will be our first 120 millimeter base warlock. Cavalry Battle Engine Warlock. <laughs> and I, I apologize um, for the, the, the sketch artwork. Um, it's actually the final artwork came in today, so I have not. Had, we didn't get a chance to get it into uh, the slideshow. We have to go to the office to access it. So. Um, uh, Gary Anchorman's book, which releases next year, has a bunch of new and exciting releases for boards. Um, however, War Machine players, just because your Colossal's book uh, focused primarily on the heavy hitters and the big guys, like for the reasons we talked about before, it doesn't mean that that is all that's in store for War Machine players um, in the coming months and especially next year. So we're, we're going to go ahead and give you guys a sneak peek at a lot of the awesome new War Machine content that is coming your way. Uh, very soon. So first up, as you guys might have seen, if you've been over to Ben Meisner Station, is our uh, our Bane Riders Cavalry for Cricks. Oh! Cricks was the, the only War Machine faction to get light cavalry, so now we're we're upgrading them to a, a, a standard cavalry unit, um, which brings us to light cavalry for everyone Woo! else. Yeah! Game we call Level Seven Escape. 
Um, and, uh, and so I've been uh, chatting a little bit about this online with people. And uh, we're going we're gonna to show you uh, some, some glimpses of what the game is going to look like. But if it's okay with you guys, um, I was hoping that you would indulge me and allow me to show you uh, a little art project that I've been working on for the last eight months uh, in the form of an eight-minute film. It'll, it'll give you a glimpse of, of, uh, uh, of what Level 7 is all about. And I know that uh, there's, there's not been a lot of information about this, and uh, you know, uh, everybody here is a War Machine and Hordes player, but I'm hoping that this will have uh, some tangential interest to you and that you'll enjoy it. So, uh, I have to ask you to please not film this. Um, this, uh, this film will be online in about a week and a half, and, uh, and I'd very much like it if you guys would help me to, uh, to preserve the integrity of it and not film it and put it online. So it's got a lot of credits and there's a lot of people involved. <laughs> so I'll spare you guys the, uh, those details for the moment. We'll get back to the business at hand. But thank you for uh, indulging me and, and letting me inflict my, uh, my passion on you. So. Um, I hope you liked it, and I uh, hope that it maybe uh, interests you and wanted to play this game because we're all really excited about this next product from, uh, from Privateer. And uh, hopefully if you do play it, you'll fare a little bit better than the star of the film. So, um, Not likely. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I guess we've got a few slides of what the game's going to look like. And um, I'll just uh, real briefly describe it. We've been doing a panel um, this week where we're talking about it. But uh, Level 7 is a, uh, a, a semi-cooperative uh, board game with, uh, where you are exploring a, an underground facility known as Subterra Bravo where uh, the, the, the secret branch of the government, the U.S. government, has been working alongside aliens for the past 50 years uh, to do some really insidious shit. <laughs> and uh, so, in the game, you you wake up uh, in a pretty hostile place, as you, you might have gathered from the film, and uh, you have one goal, which is to get the hell out and get home. Um, it uh, it plays through uh, seven scenarios, each one progressing through a level of the facility, uh, starting at level seven, and uh, which you got a glimpse of there at the, uh, the end of the film. And uh, like I said, it's uh, semi-cooperative, which means uh, you can elect to work with or against the other people that are trying to escape as well. It's to your advantage to do both. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so here's a few of, the, a few of the, the art pieces from the game showing the different denizens that, uh, that lurk in this facility. And I'm not going to tell you too much about the story, but as you might have inferred, we are uh, dealing with modern UFO mythology and uh, government conspiracy theory, and it's all in one big messy pot of this underground place called Subterra Bravo. Uh, yeah, please, please. So the the design concept behind this game is that it's a tile exploration game. So some of the things you're seeing, like this right here, is the incinerator room, um, and as you explore, you will place tiles. Uh, that represent the facility and that may trigger events that may also spawn uh, enemies and have you them attack you and you're looking for the exit in most of them. Each scenario plays completely differently. The, I, the, the goal was to give a different play experience for each of the different levels so that as you play the first time you will play hopefully uh, through all seven so that you can experience the story but then when you go back you can choose the scenarios that you really enjoyed. Um, there's scenarios where it's just a flat-out race to the exit. There are scenarios where you may have to um, do some puzzle solving to figure out how best to uh, achieve your objectives and then eventually reach the exit. Um, now, one of the interesting things and one of our favorite parts about this game is that we really wanted to, uh, to kind of turn the tile exploration thing on its head a little bit. And you'll notice that around this tile specifically, you have all these gray ducks. And on some of the other tiles we showed, you have black borders. Um, in the game, you can move through doors like you would expect in any kind of exploration game to find new tiles. However, once those tiles are on the board, you can actually travel through the ducts, um, which is called venting. 
And venting actually allows you to travel to any other connected part of the facility. So as you explore and you place these tiles, you really want to pay attention to how the ducts line up with the other vents. Because if you wind up on the other side of the facility and they find the exit and you're nowhere close to it, the vents are your best chance of escape. However, as you've seen from the film, the aliens also like to travel through the vents. And so they are kind of a double-edged sword. If you wind up in a tile with a vent and there are aliens nowhere near you, you might just find yourself confronted with a lot of aliens who want to eat you. Um, so it's, it's a risk and reward system. And it's one of my favorite parts of the game. And it's always fun to see those last ditch uh, escape attempts that happen with the vents. And it makes you really think about your tile placement. So all of this gorgeous art is thanks to Nestor, who uh, also did the Mountain King art that you saw earlier. Um, we absolutely love this guy. I, I think he really captured, and I'm speaking for Matt now, um, from my personal experience, he really captured, I think, the, the feel and kind of the, the whole atmosphere of, of Level 7, and we're really excited to have him. And uh, this artwork is actually the, the standee artwork. So in this game, because it, we really wanted to have a good visual representation um, and we wanted to keep the price point to uh, an extremely reasonable level. Um, there aren't any miniatures in this game. Uh, and as Matt mentioned in his panel, we are actually working on miniatures for future games. Um, however, in this one, really when you see uh, the Sandies with their gorgeous art on the table, along with the gorgeous tile art, um, it really just it evokes the whole experience and it really puts you into that, that world. And we're very excited to be able to offer this product that way. Um, so. Hopefully, uh, you guys will look forward to it this this coming fall. And uh, as a special treat, do you want to you want to tell them what what they're getting as well? In addition to watching your awesome your awesome eight minute film. Oh, we're gonna demo it. Okay. <laughs> For lock and load, we actually put together a special prototype copy, and we will be running demos Saturday and Sunday. Um, and we will be running you through a special eighth scenario that will appear in no quarter 44. Aaron can correct me if I'm wrong. 43! There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dell. Um, so you will get to experience uh, the gameplay. You, it's going to be a full, it's a full game demo. Um, so do, do watch for that. It's going to be in the lobby starting tomorrow, and we're going to run it as long as we can. Um, so if you want to be the first to get your hands on an actual game experience of level 7, check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun and we're very excited for it. When can we buy it? This fall. This fall. Uh, the price is going to be $54.99. Alright everybody, thank you for your attention and uh, let's get back to playing games.